Saturday morning. It's cold. Windy. These are sharp. That's Canyon. You'll see more of Canyon soon. I'll give you details one of these days. That's Big Old Jack. Where are you going, Big Old Jack? The quest for the yellow metal has everyone aroused today. They're all out in force. Guru's call twice. Beaver. It's a shade after 12. Tides low about uh, 3 o'clock on the bay. That's where I'm going. But, Saturday has brought me some knives. I picked them up at Trader Joe's this morning. I'm getting ready to sharpen them. I got a whole family of uh, Chicago cutlery. Let me back this off a little bit. I'm awful close here. Damn. There we go. Chicago cutleries. Eight of them, I think. Four, nine. Then I've got a Fury big chef's knife and then I have what I believe was a heckle at one time I can't read this old as what it's a nice knife but the blade looks like it's been a serrated blade I know you can't see it I got to reprofile the whole blade she got like saw teeth in her let me see if I take her over this black can here you might be able to see it It looks like some of them shuns. It's full of microchips. Like I never, I never seen a a hankel, a Wushtoff do something like this. But you can see it's looks like the Grand Canyon or shark's teeth been biting on it or something. Anyway, we'll get her sh shaped up pretty pretty quick. Some people have been wanting to know how I sharpen my knives. Well, you know, most of the time, depending on the knife, I use my wicked itch. Knife clamps in here. I use various paddles to sharpen it with. Get in there. I'm not going to get it out and clamp it, but it looks like that. And you all know what the wicked edge of this knows how it works. Put paddles on those rods, you paddle it sharp. Different grits. Starting out with uh, uh, 1 to 200 grit and going up to as high as you want to go up to 10,000 if you go into Japanese water stones I think the diamonds only go to 1200 then you go to ceramics and fine ceramics and this knife like I said just needs cleaning up I've got in the last four or five months since I bought this nice big buffer 10 inch Eastwood buffer it's got a hard sisal wheel on here for scratch removal and I use a black compound on this wheel for it to clean up, polish up the little scratches that this takes out. And I do all the knives that I sharpen if they look like they need it. This one is uh, got some dishwasher stuff on it, it looks like. I'm going to do that one. That'll clean up nice. This one's the same way. Got a big serrated one. Well, since I'm going to do them all, I might as well, I mean, since I'm going to do that one, I might as well do them all. Bird's beak and a little para. These other two don't need it. And those little steak knives, they look okay. Now, when I have power, I use what I call, what everybody, not everybody uses them, but we usually use the, what, the 1x42 Kalamazoo belt sander. There's another one on the market called Vail, made in Canada. Looks uh, similar to it. Same RPM, same size belt. It's just shaped a little different. And then we use belts. All different grade belts. Just like all different grade diamond paddles or Japanese water stones. This is like a 120 grit belt. That's like a 240 grit. 
Uh, I'm gonna skip around here a little bit as I pick them up. This is a 4,000 grit belt. That's the final bit. This is a 2,500 grit belt. This one is a 1,200 grit belt. This one is about 400 grit. You can get diamond grit, I mean diamond belt, I mean uh, sharpening belts up to 4,000 grit. That's the finest I've seen on belts. And just like the Wicked is, you finish off with leather straps or ceramic paddles. Or leather straps, can kangaroo leather, all kinds of different leather. I use leather belts with plain leather belts with white compound, plain leather belts with uh, emulsified diamond paste. Each one of these is a different grit diamond paste. That's uh, but I look at exactly that's a uh, 0.05, which is about 30 some thousand grit. This one right here is 0.025, which is like 60,000 grit. But I don't use that on many, mostly just a few really fancy pocket knives. This one right here is uh, about 6,000 grit. And I got another one in here somewhere that's 2,000 grit diamonds. But it's just a matter of how sharp and how polished you want them to get as to what you really use on them. There's no difference between using belts or diamond paddles, ceramic paddles, or Japanese water stones. You know what I mean by water stones. It's just how much time you want to spend and to what degree of polish you really want to put on it. This is quite faster. This is pretty fast. This works, you know, I use this for years and years at the farmer's markets with no electricity. But once they install electricity, I went to using this. You're four or five minutes with a knife on this. You're 10 to 12 minutes with a knife on this. So it's all a matter of time. In final finish. Uh, I could set it up and show you how it works, but, you know, you know, you just put the belt on there, and you hold the knife up here like this. You go back and forth on each grit till you get it a burr and then you go to the next one then the next one and it's just like anything else it's a progression then you finish off with the leather no big deal you've seen one you've seen them all you can google you can youtube belt sharpening and you can get a thousands and thousands of people using this Kalamazoo right here or that veil I was telling you about you can get thousands of people using the Wicked Edge you can get thousands of people using the Edge Pro there are two or three aftermarket belt sanders like this, and I can't remember the names of them, but there's other people who make them. Most of them, a couple of them lay down flat. So you kind of lay the blade on them instead of holding the blade up, you lay the blade, blade like this. I got to go to work, and then to the land, to the bay. Stand by. And when I go to shows, I usually take this little buffer. I got shaft extenders on it just a Sears verbal speed grinder that's my buffing nylon wheel and I don't never take that to the show that's just for old lawnmower blades and stuff I've got buffing wheels on the shafts I just slide them take the other shaft off and slide the other shaft on I got two buffing wheels one's coarse and one's for buffing that's a nice little Grind only weighs about 15 or 20 pounds, but it does move around a lot, so I have to clamp it down. Whereas that other one I showed you, that weighs 64 pounds. They don't move any place, except for your back herniates where you have to carry it. I'm headed to the bay. I just drove down there and there was no parking places, so I'm just going to walk in from my house. Stand by. It's rough. When we get there, it's going to be like it was this morning. But I'm hoping there's a slough there that was there yesterday, which you haven't seen yet because I haven't done the video. But as you get to this video, you'll see the slough from yesterday with me and Beaver. It was a nice slough. Tide got off good, but all this wind, and you'll see. I hope it's there, but it may not be. I was there about four hours ago, 
and it was there but it was covered under water now what that's done to it and all this wind I don't know so I don't know what to expect today but you'll understand when you see the video from yesterday stand by two minutes have passed and I'm going back home old timers uh, got me I got the, the uh, CTX and the scoop but I left the headphones <laughs> I just have to go right there so I'm not too far look at these weeds in my yard looks like a nightmare weeds everywhere they're the worst I ever seen purple doodad looking things God. we got some spray we're getting ready to put it on if this wind will ever let up Look out. Holy Toledo. Well, the big question is what we'll see at the crest of this hill if I have energy enough to get to the top of it. Stand by. Just as I suspected. Wonderful. Look at that little slough right there. That runs from here as far as you can see towards where I was yesterday. Mmm, it's windy though. Stand by. Well, then the ring man and the guru stopped by to say hello. See how I was making out. They, they've been in Nada. They're leaving. The Nada was kind of slow. They did find a button or two. I don't know what kind of shape they're in, but they said they found a button or two. Maybe they'll send me pictures of them in a little while. Tide's coming in good now. I gotta get out of here. Stand by. Might have got a hit right here. Yeah. I don't like it though, 1401, stand by. 1401, piece of junk all over them. I knew it wasn't no good. This looks like this ought to be some kind of toy gun or something, but got too many gadgets around it to be a, I don't know, you see it's got a hand like a gun grip. But it's only on the good side. <laughs> That's the other side of it. Nice taquito. Well, there's a nut from today. The only thing good about today was these glasses. When I dug them up, I thought they were just junky old glasses that had been there for 200 years. Well, they may have been there for a while, but they have only one little scratch on that lens right there. And they're really nice 275 reading glasses. I like them. I got some 200s. I got some 300s. And some 160s. These are 275s. <laughs> And I've had them on all afternoons after I cleaned them up. So it was a pretty good spin, considering. I'll see you tomorrow somewhere for Surf Church, I hope. More knives i got to pick up in the morning, but only a couple, it sounds like. Stand by.